The Korean Peninsula, though relatively small, has become a particularly strategic region in the world because of its unique history. It remains so to this day. The 38th parallel, a degree of latitude north of the equator, passes through the middle of the Korean Peninsula. It divides the region in two, symbolizing a line of influence between Washington and Beijing. Both are trying to contain the other's influence at the 38th parallel, militarily and diplomatically. It has therefore made the national policy of South Korea a critical element to U.S.-China relations and even the international balance of power. Over the past five years, the South Korean government was seen to be very close to Beijing, a situation that is now about to change. On March 9, 2022, South Koreans made a choice for their future. In its 20th presidential election, more than three-fourths of eligible voters voted. Yoon suk yeol the candidate of the largest opposition party, the People Power Party, was elected as the next president by a narrow margin. The public has observed that since December 2016, the country has been experiencing a fierce left-right battle and a deep political rift within the population. Such dynamics can be seen in the 2022 election, making it unlike previous elections in history. In this regard, the race between the two candidates has never been fiercer. The final tally was a mere 0.8 percentage points, or about 260,000 votes apart, setting a new record for the lowest vote margin in any presidential election. I think this is a victory of the great people. This outcome is disappointing for Beijing and likely a monumental defeat too. I will rebuild the Korea-U.S. alliance and strengthen our comprehensive strategic alliance while sharing the core values of liberal democracy, market economy, and human rights. Why is this election said to be a defeat for Beijing? Because there have been controversies over ballots in this and previous elections in South Korea. During this election, there were stories such as the marking of ballots and the controversy over the paper obscuring the security cameras at a local election office where about 50,000 ballots were kept, including absentee ballots. People also said that the site didn't ask voters to take off their masks for facial verification. On February 28, 2020, an ethnic Korean who worked for the Chinese Communist Party's cyber army posted an article in a blog on Naver, Korea's largest search engine. It sparked heated discussion among South Koreans. It described the manipulation of public opinion in South Korea when he worked for the CCP cyber army. We have included some of his descriptions here. The audience can judge for themselves whether they are credible. He wrote, We usually use Telegram and Twitter. About 1,000 people work on it. I wanted to keep it a secret, but when I saw that Koreans would never know the truth for the rest of their lives, I felt sorry for them, so I decided to tell them. About 15% of our cyber army are South Koreans, and the rest are ethnic Koreans from China. Most of them are college students studying in South Korea. We have also been involved in missions in the current presidential and local elections. The CCP cyber army is a problem, but the Chinese college students studying in South Korea are a much bigger problem. Most of them are wealthy and don't even need to study in South Korea, so they come here for a reason. The CCP uses every possible way to have South Korea become part of its own country in order to fight against the US. If South Korea becomes red, it will be easier for the Communist Party to fight against the US. After South Korea becomes red, North and South Korea will both belong to the Communist Party. It would be another big step on the road to global hegemony, and it would be easier to fight the U.S. The Chinese Communist government is so smart that it would never fight the U.S. before annexing South Korea. China is building a steel plant and an aluminum plant in South Korea. 100% of the electric cars imported into South Korea are made in China, and the Korean government even pays subsidies for them solar panels, China's Belt and Road Project in Sigong, Smart City. Is it a coincidence that all of these are happening at the same time? China is even about to get its hands on the Korean power company Kepco this time. So, Korea is now in a very dangerous position. During the presidential election, Moon Jae-in was elected president because of the help of the CCP's cyber army and the participation of the CCP. He was indebted to the CCP, so he was at its mercy. The moment he tried to break free, the CCP would immediately send the Democratic Party to the bottom. Lee Myung-bak and Park Jin-hae's faction is impossible to the CCP. 
Since she was a child, Park learned her father's way of life and values. She would use the CCP, but not trust it. That's why she participated in the related activities while developing the THAAD anti-missile system. The CCP's cyber army functions as one and takes orders from higher-ups. The necessary talent is put in the right place and they have a wealth of experience and expertise. The incited Koreans would begin to act. They would ignorantly go to many other communities to spread disinformation. The management of the BOBE community has also been infiltrated by the CCP cyber army, and there is no community in Korea that isn't secretly controlled by the CCP cyber army. China has a huge population and there are too many talents in this field. The fall of South Korea must be due to the CCP, not North Korea. When South Korea isn't united and when it's divided internally, the CCP will seize the opportunity and take advantage of the situation. And this is the CCP. Yoon suk Yeol is 61 years old. He became a prosecutor in 1994 and was promoted to chief prosecutor after President Moon Jae-in took office in 2017. He directed the investigation of corruption cases against two former presidents, Park Jen hye and Lee Myung-bak. In 2020, he broke away from Moon Jae-in and was forced to resign in March 2021. He then devoted himself to the presidential election in June. Because of his public image as an honest and upright prosecutor, he is loved by many of his supporters. He is the first president without parliamentary political experience since the implementation of the democratic direct election in South Korea. Yoon suk Yeol is a conservative. He opposes excessive government intervention in the economy, advocating a lower real estate tax, promoting a private sector-led approach to housing supply, and planning to abolish restrictions on small and medium-sized businesses to protect employment opportunities. With a population of more than 50 million, South Korea is the 10th largest economy in the world. At present, Yoon suk Yeol has to face the problems of soaring housing prices and high youth unemployment. They are the main concerns of the Korean people. Since there is such a job shortage these days, I hope that the job shortage will be resolved and the economy will be revived. The tragedy of killing compatriots should never happen again. While North Korea is still threatening us with nuclear weapons to fight a war, the new president should not be fooled by them. On diplomatic issues, Yoon suk Yeol believes that South Korea should strengthen cooperation with the U.S. in key areas where the U.S. and China are competing, such as technology, supply chains, and semiconductors. At the same time, it is necessary to maintain and develop cooperative relations with China and will promote diplomatic efforts with China based on mutual respect and cooperation. Yoon suk Yeol, who is tough on North Korea, said he will resolutely respond to North Korea's nuclear provocations by bolstering military cooperation with the U.S. and Japan. I will build strong armed forces to deter any provocations in order to protect our people's safety, property, and sovereignty. I will respond sternly against North Korea's illegal and irrational actions according to principles, but I'll always leave a door open for dialogues with North Korea. North Korea has already launched eight missiles in 2022. With North Korea's provocations, one of the main focuses of the presidential election was the candidate's stance on the purchase of the U.S. anti-missile system, the THAAD. President Mu Jae-in has made a three-nose pledge to the CCP, namely, no additional deployment of THAAD, no participation in the U.S.-led global missile defense system, and no establishment of a trilateral military alliance involving Japan. Since the South Korean constitution stipulates that the presidential term is five years, the incumbent president can't run for re-election. The candidate of the ruling Democratic Party, Lee Jae-myung, has inherited Moon's position. After taking office, Yoon suk Yeol said that he will abolish the three no-promises made by the Moon Jae-in administration to the CCP and will purchase additional THAAD systems, which the CCP strongly dislikes, and deploy them closer to Seoul. He said that there was a possibility of economic retaliation by the CCP, but argued that reversing the three no's would provide an opportunity to reset diplomatic relations with the CCP. Following Yoon's victory, a White House announcement said President Joe Biden spoke with Yoon on the phone to congratulate him on his victory. 
It said the two men affirmed the strength of the U.S.-South Korean alliance, saying the relationship is key to maintaining peace, security, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesman also congratulated Yoon on his victory on March 10th. We are willing to work with South Korea to take the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties as an opportunity to promote the healthy and stable development of bilateral relations and bring even greater benefits to the people of both nations. China is South Korea's largest trading partner. However, a new survey conducted by polling firm Korea Research and Korea News Magazine shows that Korean citizens are increasingly anti-China. China has become the most disliked country by Koreans, with more than 58% of respondents saying that China or the CCP is close to evil, and only 4.5% saying that China is close to good. South Korea's East Asia Daily analyzed that the anti-China sentiment in South Korea originated from the deployment of the U.S. THAAD anti-missile system in 2017. Beijing believes the system is equipped with enough radar to be able to spy on China's airspace and endanger China's security so it's implemented a series of economic retaliation against South Korea. Hundreds of Latte Group supermarkets in China were forced to close and all Chinese tourists in Korea disappeared. The Communist Party's South Korea ban on the entertainment industry has yet to be officially lifted, as it has almost completely shut out South Korean pop culture from China. Many Korean media believe that the CCP has been culturally pirating Korea. For example, the Chinese website Baidu.com explains the origin of Korean traditional clothing as Han Fu, the traditional styles of clothing worn by the Han Chinese. It suggests that Korean kimchi is derived from Chinese pickled cabbage, Taekwondo is inspired by Chinese martial arts, and ginseng chicken soup and rice bimimbap are both of Chinese origin. In the wake of the global popularity of the Korean drama Squid Game, Communist Party Little Pink accused the actors in the drama of plagiarizing the green sportswear worn from China. Relations between China and South Korea took a turn for the worse at the recent Beijing Winter Olympics. After a dispute over the ruling at the Games, the Korean Sports Federation appealed to the International Olympic Committee and said in a statement that there was bias and a lack of transparency in the relationship between the international sports community and the judges. It can be said that the anti-China sentiment in South Korea helped Yoon's victory to some extent. In this election, there were also a number of intriguing details. Former President Park Jeon-hai was sentenced to 20 years in prison in January 2021 for the cronyism case and was granted a special pardon on December 31, 2021. Park voted for Yoon suk yeol in an advance vote at a polling place near Samsung Seoul Hospital on the morning of March 5th, a source said. In the East Asia region, the relationship between China and Japan has also become more antagonistic. The Quadrilateral Security Dialogue is a Japanese-initiated, U.S.-led diplomatic and military arrangement to address the expansion of Chinese economic and military power in the Indo-Pacific region. The U.S. and its allies, such as Australia, are seeking active participants to strengthen the Quadripartite Security Dialogue. In recent years, attention has been focused on South Korea's attitude. All indications are that Korea's position will play a key role in the strategic framework of the U.S.-China rivalry. Yoon suk yeol has suggested that Korea should cooperate more fully with the quadrilateral security dialogue formed by the U.S., Australia, India, and Japan. Especially now, as the international community faces a new era of major changes, a healthy Japan-South Korea relationship is indispensable in order to realize the international order under rules or for peace, stability, and prosperity in the world and for the region. Against this backdrop, Beijing is presumably feeling more pressure. Yoon's foreign policy vision has changed decisively from that of his predecessor, and this change may well be the starting point for a major shift in the country's policy.